of patient prior to estimation, which are emulators. So I assume we still don't have uh, questions at this point. Most questions we are addressing directly on the Slack. Okay, very good. So emulators. So I mentioned earlier, what, what do we do when our model is slow? So if you can only probe your model for a sample of parameter space. Because remember here that technically the posterior, when you evaluate it, you assume that you know the prediction of your model for every single point in parameter space. Now, in practice, this is not, this is not workable. Um, now, let's see. Right, so in practice, what you want, what often is the case is that your, um, your model is quite smooth as a function of the parameters. So it should not in general be necessary to know exactly the values of your parameter, every single parameter point. It should be enough that you know, you know the value of your observables for a sample of the parameter point. And from this information, you should be able to perform your Bayesian analysis because you should have enough information about your model. So this is what we call emulators. So emulators are, you take a sample of your parameter space. For example, if you have your shear viscosity, you just, evaluate, you just pick a few different points in shear viscosity. Then you evaluate what is your observable, your V2 at this shear viscosity. And then you, um, you simply use this information to, um, to um, interpolate between the points. Um, now, now again, remember that we're, we're considering, we're thinking of the model as a product, of the output of the model as a probability distribution. So this, these emulators are probability distributions as well. So what you have is a prob probabilistic predictor for your model. Now, if you want to put, uh, to look at this in um, more visually, so what you have is some observable, you have parameters, and these design points are the points for which you will evaluate your observable across the parameter space. These point will have some uncertainty, of course, because every single one of these points, again, we think of them as probability distributions, right? So your emulator will be constrained at these points, uh, at these calculation points um, from, from, um, from the output of the model. But typically you don't want your emulator to be too aggressive in fitting the, these points because you have some statistical uncertainty. So emulator should be constrained by the parameters without trying to overfit it. It should take into account properly this uncertainty. So it should try to attain certain level of smoothness uh, in your description of the model parameters. And it should take into account this uncertainty. And this uncertainty should be reflected in the uncertainty of the emulator. Now again, this is a, just a different way of looking at the same quantity. So if you were in a case where you have extremely precise calculation, but you have few points in parameter space, it would look something like this. So at each point, your emulator is extremely well constrained but between the points, you essentially have, you, you don't necessarily have constraints. So your emulator uncertainty should balloon up between these points. And how much it balloons should be essentially a function of the smoothness of, that you're assuming uh, for your observable. So there's some input that you have to give to your emulator um, to determine how smooth is a function, for example. But a good emulator, and the typical emulator that is used in the field is a Gaussian process emulator. A good emulator will do exactly this. It will properly account for this interpolation uncertainty, which means that even if you have very few data points, you can still perform your 
your Bayesian parameter estimation because even though it's a sacrifice, you, you will not get a, an excellent result because you have this large emulate, this large interpolation uncertainty, you will still get a reasonable result because this, this interpolation uncertainty will be taken into account. So this is extremely important. The, you need an emulator that does this, that takes it into account and Gaussian process emulators are excellent because they can take into account this interpolation uncertainty. And at the same time, they can take into account the uncertainty that you have on any one of your uh, design points. Now, I made the choice not to discuss in more details Gaussian process simulator, in part because there's excellent material from previous schools on this topic. And also in part because I wanted to spend more time on what I think are important of basics of patient parent estimation. But let me walk you through very briefly how you essentially end up using an emulator in, uh, in a, Bayesian, a Gaussian process emulator in a Bayesian parameter estimation. So the first thing you do is that you define your parameter space. So you essentially you define your prior, you define over what range of parameter you want to study your model. And what you'll do is that you'll sample your parameter space. So you'll decide on which point in parameter you will be evaluating your model. And these points correspond to these points here. Now, this is typically done with some algorithm that tries to, to spread the points um, as much as possible over the parameter space. So you don't want two design points to be very close to each other. So typically people use uh, something like a Latin hypercube algorithm to spread your point across the parameter, across the parameter space. Now, what you'll do is you'll evaluate your model at each one of these parameter points, and then you will train the emulators on the output of the model. So training the emulator means that you're essentially uh, making the emulator um, learn what uncertainty it should have at each point, given your, your model outputs. Now, remember, we're not emulating the model itself, we're emulating the model observable. So, so the, the Gaussian process simulator is for V2, it's for DNDY, it's for RA, it's not for the model itself, of course. And actually in practice, it's not even, it's not even the V2 and the DNDY that we're modeling. Actually, typically we do a principal component analysis, and this is both for, there's a variety of reasons, but in part it's for efficiency. So, so, it's, it's sufficient to describe a small number of linear combination of your part of your observables to get to capture essentially most of your models dependence on the parameter. So you do a Bayesian parameter estimation, you end up with combination of your observables or really rescale observables. And then this is what you train a, a, a Gaussian process emulator on. So you, you end up with a separate Gaussian process simulator for each major linear combination of, actually it's not model part, it's model observables. Now let me just refer you to this, again, this excellent material from previous schools if you'd like to learn more about Gaussian process simulators. There'll also be some exercises that we'll introduce um, not today, but a homework, and also tomorrow, Waya will be showing some example that use Gaussian process simulators. So you'll get you'll get some exposure to um, Gaussian process simulator in the coming uh, today and tomorrow. Now, let me just say a few more words. About